अच्छा सो सो वी हैड टॉक्ड अबाउट फुली डिस्प्लेड फॉर्मूलास वेयर यू शो एवरी सिंगल एटम एंड बॉन्ड एंड देन वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द कंडेंस्ड स्ट्रक्चरल फॉर्मूला व्हिच इज कि इफ यू रनिंग आउट ऑफ स्पेस यू कैन राइट द फॉर्मूला इन जस्ट वन स्ट्रेट लाइन एंड दैट इज कि उसको बस लेफ्ट टू राइट ना लिखना शुरू कर दो कार्बन सी एच थ्री सी एच विद इन ओ एच सी एच विद सी एच टू सी एच थ्री पुट ब्रांचेज इन ब्रैकेट एंड यू फॉर सी एच थ्री दिस वन सी एच थ्री सी ओ सी ओ ओ सी विद विद ब्रैकेट इन सी एच थ्री एंड देन दिस डबल बॉन्ड इन सी एच टू ठीक है दैट्स रिटर्न इन वन लाइन सो वी डेड अच्छा वी डेड कंडेंस ये क्लियर है ना कंडेंस फॉर्मूलाज इज दैट क्लियर अच्छा अब ये के अच्छा दिस गोइंग टू बी अनदर वन अनदर फार्मूला व्हिच इज अच्छा दिस गोइंग टू बी अनदर फार्मूला व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड अ स्केलेटल फार्मूला ठीक है एंड दैट इज अनदर वर्जन ऑफ अ वर्जन ऑफ अ स्ट्रक्चरल फार्मूला ठीक है दैट्स पार्ट सी ठीक है तो पार्ट सी इज अच्छा पार्ट सी नीचे कर लो थोड़ा अच्छा सो पार्ट सी इज योर क्या कहते हैं इसको इट्स दिस इज नोन एज द स्केलेटल फॉर्मूला ठीक है एंड व्हाट्स व्हाट्स द स्केल फॉर्मूला दैट उसमें क्या होता है यू डोंट You pretty much don't show anything in the skeletal formula. Okay, for example, you don't. You only show uh, only carbon and hydrogen bonds are shown. Sorry, only carbon carbon bonds are shown. So skeletal formula. Me one second. Acha, only carbon carbon bonds are shown. Not even the atoms. So you only show them, and any functional group. So if there's any functional group that will be shown as well. Take a functional group as anything that's apart from the carbon chain. So for example, if I have this molecule, let's start with the. Let's see how to draw skeletal formulas. Take okay? it. So let's say I have this molecule and uh, I'll add in the hydrogens. Uh, so the first one has uh, three hydrogens. Okay. The second one uh, has two hydrogens. This one has two hydrogens. This one has two hydrogens. And this is how it will be. There would be three hydrogens. Okay. Every carbon atom must be making. Uh, it must be making four bonds. So now the skeletal formula shows nothing except for the carbon-carbon bond. So you've got one carbon you've got another carbon you've got uh, the third carbon the fourth carbon and the fifth carbon so there are five carbon atoms so the molecule is shown with with zigzag lines theek hai it's shown with zigzag lines and uh, kitne carbons there there were like five carbons right so this one has uh, now the nodes of of this zigzag line they're all carbon atoms so for example this is one carbon atom that's the second carbon atom that's the third carbon atom that's the fourth carbon atom and that's the that's the fifth carbon atom and that's it theek hai that's the molecule that's it you only show carbon carbon bonds that's about it so this over here uh it shows the carbon carbon bonds and that's that's it that's the only thing that's shown okay so just think of the carbon atom as these nodes and there are five carbon atoms and they're all uh they're all connected together so 1 2 3 4 5 five carbon atoms and uh, these are the bonds that are in between them and you don't show anything else the any other thing that's going to be shown that's going to be the functional group 
So is this idea clear? You have a clear, simple idea. Yes, sir. Oh, that's clear. Emma, this is clear. So, sir, how are the uh, function groups going to be shown? See, I'm, I'm going to come to that. Uh, just a second. Let's try and do another one first. Uh, let's say I've got. So let's say I've uh, right now I'm just doing molecules that just have carbon atoms, right? So mm, okay. I'm going to bring in the functional groups later on. So let's say I've got uh, this molecule and it's got a double bond as well. And uh, it's got a branch as well. That means uh, there's carbon atoms coming out of it, right? And let's say there's, uh, there's another carbon atom over here. So add in the hydrogens. Uh, so how many hydrogens do you have in the first one? That's uh, three. This carbon is making uh, two bonds. So it's going to have two more hydrogens. This one will have one H. Uh, this one will have uh, three bonds. So it's got one H. Uh, this one will have three H's. Uh, this carbon atom needs uh, another hydrogen. So that's one H with this one. And there's going to be two H's with this one. Uh, this carbon atom needs two H's. And this one needs three H's, TK. So that's like a mixture of condensed and uh, displayed formula, right? As a, how do I draw the schedule formula for this one? So what I'll do is I'm going to go with the straight line first. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six carbon atoms, right? So, so there's six carbon atoms in a line. So let's do that first. Uh, so that's one, two, three, three, four, five, and six. Okay, let me count that again. Uh, so that's the first carbon atom. The second, third, I said then fourth, fifth, and this over here is my is my sixth. The one mark given are the six carbon atoms. That that's your six carbon atoms, right? And there's a double bond uh, right at the end. So so this will this one the last one will be a double bond. I say, is this clear? I mean, this this thing, is this clear? This entire thing? Yes. I said, yes. then on the third carbon atom, there's a branch. So there's there's a one carbon atom branch that's on the third one. So on the third one, uh, which one is my third one? The third one is, uh, is this one. This is the third one. So on the third one, there's a one carbon atom branch. So that's... So that's my branch, the one carbon atom branch, right? I said, remember, it doesn't matter whether the bond is going upwards or downwards, it's the same thing. I said, and the fourth carbon atom, there's there's a two carbon atom branch. So there's a, so over here, you've got, you've got two carbon atoms coming out of the fourth carbon atom, right? Uh, so two carbon atoms on the fourth one. This is my fourth one, right? So two carbon atoms coming out of it. So that's one and two. So is this clear? Yes, sir. Sir, you can dots Like if you look at the skeletal formula, there are no dots drawn. I mean, you, I mean, that's just for, I mean, you can, you, you can draw dots just for your own. I mean, the dots don't really matter. I mean, this is what a skeletal formula would actually look like. It doesn't have dots, TK. Okay, sir. This is, uh, for example, if I look at skeletal formulas, uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't see any dots. TK, you wouldn't see any dots. Uh, but it would be helpful if you, uh, it would be helpful for you if you if you just mark those dots. It's still the same thing, right? TK, so uh, it wouldn't really matter, TK. No one is going to cut marks for that. But it would be helpful. That's one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms, right? I said now coming back to I said coming back to the other stuff, which is uh which is functional group, right? So let's say I've got a molecule that has all these functional groups attached to it. So it's got a double bond O and OH, right? And let's say it's got a it's got a carbon chain as well, two carbon atoms over here. That's our Baki. I'll I'll just put in all the hydrogens. So that's uh 
this one has three hydrogens. So this one has two hydrogens. This one has one H. Uh, this one will have two H's. And this one over here will have will have three H's, right? So that's my molecule. So I'm going to draw the skeletal formula for this one. So better the straight line me to the other. Okay, we'll. I said, remember, it doesn't matter. Remember, skeletal formulas can. I mean, I mean, the direction of the bonds don't matter, right? Case go. I mean, uh, I said. As long as it's zigzag, remember, it's always going to be zigzag. You don't draw straight lines. Like if you go from this point to this point, the other one will not be a straight line. It's going to be either going downwards or it might be going upwards as well. It doesn't really matter whether you go up or down. It's going to be the same thing. <coughs> so what will we do here? We'll do... So we've got these one. So I've got two. I've got a third one, fourth one, and I've got a... Fifth one. So I've got five carbon atoms. I'm going to draw those five carbon atoms. So that's one, two, three, four, and this five. Okay, those are my. I said those are my five carbon atoms, right? Now, if you look over here on the on the second last one, there are two more carbon atoms, right? So second last, which one is my second last one? So on my second last one, there are two more carbon atoms. Is that clear? That's it. Clear? Sir, of the atoms, come. What are we doing? Ab ab us pe aaro. As I've drawn yes, the car, as I've drawn the carbon atoms, right? So uh, five carbon atoms in the line. That's one, two, three, four, five. On the second last one, there are two more carbon atoms coming out of it. These are the two carbon atoms that are coming from the second last one. I said end where there's a carboxylic acid, so I'll just I'll just draw exactly that. It's double bond O N. I said so it is double bond O N. O H. Right, you will call end where double bond O N O H. The third one from the right, that's a double bond O. So this this one, that's a that's going to be a double bond O. So I'm just going to add that double bond. And O. The most functional group was either draw color that said. Is that clear? <coughs> so you you draw the functional group as it is, TK. I said that's uh so we'll just we'll just practice a few more questions. Uh let's go back. It's got draw color. How would you how would you draw the skill formula for this one? It's uh I guess it's kite carbon atom. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. But remember, it's they're arranged in a cyclic manner. So that's one, two, three, four. Here, uh, yeah, or oh, yeah. Okay, so I've got I've got one, two, three, four, so five and six carbon atoms, right? In a cyclic manner, uh, you've got a double bond over here. So this uh, this this double bond that's uh, somewhere over here, and I've got a carbon chain that's uh, that's over here. Okay, so I've I've got a carbon chain that's over here. Uh, one carbon atom. Is that clear? Yes. Or in could be draw color. Think it's uh, how would this look like? So it's make your it's uh, it's one two three carbon atoms. Then there's an O. You have to mention so it's one two three carbon atoms. This was a draw color. This one two three carbon atoms. So you start what a one two and three right. The first three, first, second, and third. Then there is there's an O. So उसके बाद पे O ले ओ. The third carbon atom will be connected to an O. So there's. Remember, you have to show the O, right? And after the O, there's another carbon atom. So that one is connected to another carbon atom, right? And then there's another carbon atom after that. और वो जो आखिरी वाला है ना, that's a 
that's a double bond. So is this is this clear? One, two, three carbon atoms, the first three. Then there's an O in the middle, to put O R A, and then that O is bonded to two more carbon atoms. So that's double bond. Is that clear? Yes. So uh, yes. let me add the rest of the things. Then there's this carb this carbon atom on the second last one. So there's uh so there's this carbon chain. Uh, coming out from the second last one and uh, the functional groups double bond or double bond O. So you got you got uh, a double bond O over here and a double bond O over here as well. And a double bond O. So that is that is this molecule, TK. Okay? So the only reason you use for, uh, skeletal formula is that it's a uh, it's a lot quicker to draw. If you if you have a habit of drawing skill formulas, you can be very quick. But zigzag line draw can you don't even have to draw. Like, I mean, this would be I mean this would be very quick. Like instead of drawing the first one, just draw a zigzag zigzag line. That's about it. So you can be very quick with that. So time basta. Mainly time basta, okay? As a or be we'll we'll just do a, a few more. That's uh so, sure. so sure. yeah. Are there questions? Are there questions specifically asking us to draw different kinds of formulas, or is it yes. up to us? No, there'll be. That's what I'm saying. They'll be very specific. Like, for example, if you, if you, I mean, we haven't started organic chemistry, but if they ask you for a question and you're supposed to draw, they'll be very specific about which formula you're supposed to draw. Oh, okay. Okay, so I mean, they might say, okay, draw the skeletal formula of the product. So you have to draw the skeletal. Form. I mean, first thing is you have to know what the product is. Then you have to figure out how to draw the skeletal formula. Uh, they might ask you to tell them the molecular formula or uh, the if they are, if they, it's, the term structural formula is the broadest term because structural formula has also, I mean, any formula that has structure in it, that's a structural formula. So if they ask you to draw the structural formula, you could draw any one of them. You could draw fully displayed. You could draw a condensed version of the structural formula. Or you could draw, draw a skeletal formula. That is also a structural formula. But if they're very specific that you draw the fully displayed one, then you have to draw the fully displayed one. So we actually call it this one. Because in the rest of organic chemistry, we'll just keep on practicing this. So again, that's four carbon atoms. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four carbon atoms, right? So this molecule has four carbon atoms. Um, on the second one, there's an OH. And on the third one, there are two more carbon atoms. So that's uh, one and two. So that is how the molecule looks like. Um, so these are the three formulas, right? Fully displayed, a condensed version of the same thing, and uh, skeletal formula. Now, he, and they might give you, I mean, you have to be very good with this, TK. I mean, this is one of the basic things. But remember, we'll just keep on practicing this. Whenever we study organic chemistry, we'll just keep on doing this, TK, the three types of formulas. But is this clear? You clear, Sara? Yes, sir. Yes. I say that I add because you don't show, show any carbon or hydrogen atoms, right? This can then I just uh, write this. Okay. So, no carbon or H atoms are shown. I said, now, I said the, the reverse is also important. Like, not only should you know how to make a skeletal formula, what if they give you a skeletal formula? So let's say they give you this thing. And uh, so, and they tell you that
so let's say they give you ekh2 laga also Uh, let's say they give you this thing and they tell you to draw the structural formula or the or the fully displayed formula so how do you do that uh, you'll you'll do the opposite it's one two so first you you're going to draw two carbon atoms so that's one and then you've got another carbon atom okay that's two carbon atoms after that you've got an oxygen after that you've got a third carbon atom that's got a double bond o okay that's your third so that's your third carbon atom and it's and it's a double bond o as uske baad ke uske baad you've got the fourth carbon atom and from the fourth carbon atom there's a there's a carbon atom that's right in front of it and there's a carbon the two carbon atoms that are below it right like two carbon atoms in this direction and there's one carbon atom the, in the other direction right i said this one the last one is double bond o and nh2 and you can fill in the hydrogens this one will have uh, how many h's uh, chs you okay, let's say they're asking for a fully displayed this one will have two h's this carbon has all four bonds uh, this carbon over here will have one more h theek hai this one will have two h's this one will have three h's theek hai to reverse bhi aana chahiye theek hai the opposite so is this clear ji sir yes acha ab ye ke let's start talking about about naming molecules theek hai as you remember as naming is going to be slightly more i mean a lot more common. i mean it's all of us mein it was pretty basic igcs it was it was pretty basic yahan pe the naming is going to be you'll be pretty much doing full fledged naming that's so how do you how do you name organic compounds as a naming se pehle na i'll i'll discuss uh, that uh, organic compounds are going to be divided into families and those families are known as homologous series you've got a, you've got a lot of them so homologous series is is the families of organic compounds of which are classified based on a based on five criteria family of organic compounds so organic molecules having number 1 they going to have similar chemical properties they going to have similar chemical properties um <coughs> so the reactions will be similar they going to show trends in physical properties i said remember the the molecules will not have exactly the same physical properties but they'll show trends in physical properties one thing about physical properties is that uh, when you talk about physical properties one thing important about physical properties is that when the molecule size increases a few things happen one is that the melting and boiling point will be higher uh the molecule will have uh, more viscosity as a or okay it's a uh, as a molecule is going to have more viscosity it's going to have uh, less flammability
ठीक है ये दो तीन प्रॉपर्टीज है एंड रीजन फॉर दैट इज दैट बिगर मॉलिक्यूल्स हैव मोर वैंडरवॉल्स फोर्सेस देयर व्हेनेवर यू हैव अ बिगर मॉलिक्यूल दे हैव मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स व्हिच मींस दैट दे विल हैव मोर वैंडरवॉल्स फोर्सेस ठीक Uh, this molecule over here has uh, around. Uh, it's got electrons. It's got. Uh, it's got. Well, uh, it's got a certain number of electrons. ठीक है. अगर मैं उसको show करूँ. अच्छा, so so it's got. It's got. I mean, this molecule has a certain amount of electrons. This molecule has a certain amount of electrons. The exact number of electrons, I think, that's uh, carbon is six. Carbon is six. 12 plus uh, 6 that's uh, 18 electrons so it's got a total of 18 electrons in the entire molecule right this one also has 18 electrons in the entire molecule now these are 18 electrons are going to be evenly distributed it's a non polar molecule carbon and hydrogen have almost the same electronegativity which means that the electrons are evenly distributed all atoms are pulling the electrons equally is that clear you clear about Yes, yes. Well, the carbon's electronegativity is two point one, and hydrogen's electronegativity is two point five. Kind of similar, right? So both atoms are equally pulling electrons. So the electrons are kind of evenly distributed everywhere. But during collisions, what happens is that the electrons might get knocked to one side. Van der Waals forces is that uh, now in Van der Waals forces, what happens is that the electrons they get knocked to either side randomly. ठीक है, there's no specific, so it's a temporary dipole. Sometimes this side will become negatively charged and this side will become positively charged, right? Why will that? Why will that happen? Because uh, the electrons might get knocked to one side during a collision. Do you clear it? Rafi, I mean, who knows? Is this clear? Yes. And if this side becomes negative, the other electrons will also get repelled because of the negative charge over here. So, the neighboring molecule over there, the electrons over there are also going to get kind of repelled, and that side will become negative, and this side will become. So that will become positive, and there's going to be an attraction, right? That's going to exist, and that's known as a Van der Waals force. But the next moment, the opposite might happen. Okay, these two molecules, another they might, the very next moment. The electrons might get knocked to the other side. So, so when that happens, ठीक है, when the electrons get knocked to the other side, तो let's say इसको rotate कर लेते हैं, the electrons might get knocked to this side, right? So this का जो positive होगा ना वो that side will become negative and this side will become and this side will also switch. <laughs> so, so next moment this side will become negative and that side will become. Positive and the positive side will attract the electrons from the other molecule, and their electrons will also get pushed to one side, and that side will become negative. So the positive and negative ends will start attracting each other, and that's known as Van der Waals forces. And this is known as uh, instantaneous dipole, induced dipole, attractive forces, or temporary dipole. So this one is instantaneous. And induced dipole. As a Van der Waals forces depends on the number of electrons. Like if this molecule had like fifty uh, electrons, 
then the amount of dipoles created, temporary dipoles created, they will be stronger. So bigger molecules have more electrons. And when you have more electrons, so if you had a bigger molecule, if you have more electrons, so the amount of dipoles, stronger temporary dipole induced dipoles created in that case. Okay, so is this is this part clear that the bigger the molecule, the more Van der Waals forces it's going to have? Clear the path? Yes, sir. Yes. So size ke saath, you'll have more Van der Waals forces and it will be much harder to boil it. It's going to be more viscous and it's going to be less flavorable as well because it's because it's not going to mix with oxygen as well. Yeah. Could you could you give the definition of viscosity, sir? Once more. Viscosity is the thickness or the inability to move. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, technical definition. I mean, viscosity is just a word. Uh, like it's uh, it just means like honey is viscous, water is not viscous, right? It's a re relative term. So viscosity. But well, technical definition of Queen Yogi, it's uh, the resistance to such flow is called viscosity, right? The inability. So to if it's if it's lower, that means that it flows much easier. Yeah, like water is less viscous and honey is viscous, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and remember, it's a relative term. It's a uh, it's a relative term. Like you can't say something is viscous or not unless you compare it to something. Gases ten, gases tend to have very low viscosity because gases don't even attract each other. So no one is stopping them from flowing. So gases, if, if a gas is flowing through a pipe, it will flow very easily. Gases, they, I mean, the more attractive forces that they have, the more viscous it's going to be. As a third point, organic molecules, what's a homologous series? Uh, one of us better, there would see more. I just see you had three more points. Uh, so the third one was, so what's the third? So the third point, the third point was that uh, uh, they have the same functional groups. So what's, what's a functional group? A functional group is, is a group of atoms or a structure of, or a particular structure. Uh, that determines the chemical properties of a molecule. So when you have an organic molecule, not the, you, the whole thing is not reacting. It's like if I have an alkene, so if I have an alkene, this one has two H's, this one has one H, this one has two H's, this one has three H's. Now, all reactions, they tend to happen with the, with this, with this double bond. The rest of the molecule is pretty much not doing anything. So, so that is the functional group of, uh, of an alkene. You can have number four here. Number four is, uh, what's number four? So number four is that they will have the same general formula. That's number four. So same general formula. Okay, so you had this could be underlined for the same functional groups. They show trends in physical properties. I said general formula. Remember this: ke the general formula only applies to simple uh, molecules. It's only applicable to simple molecules. Uh, 
they usually don't work for other molecules, which are slightly more complicated. Uh, one example is that an alkene is uh, CNH2N, right? So for propene, it's going to work. That it is actually going to be CT86. But you make the molecule slightly complicated, uh, it's the general formula is not going to work. It's it's not going to be CNH2N. Like what's what's what if a molecule has two double bonds? So yeah, the general formula works. It is CNH2N. But for a slightly more complicated molecule like a, like a molecule having two double bonds. So this one will have two H's, this one will have one H, this one will have two H's. You got one H, you got one H, you got three H's. So for this one, the general formula does not work. This one is if you count the atoms, that's uh, three, three, six, six carbon atoms. And if you count the hydrogen, that's three, four, five, six, seven, and three, ten. So general formula does not Although it's, it's also an alkene, but it doesn't work. So you throw a the general formula, it's uh, it's only applicable for simple molecules. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So that's an alkene? And both of them are alkenes, but, uh, but the general formula does not work for this one. Mm, okay. I mean, it's only going, remember for general formulas, you're not going to use general formulas because general formulas are horrible. They don't work. Most of the time, they don't work. They only work for like really simple molecules. Like mm -hmm. if you want to draw a three carbon, like if you have a complicated molecule, they're obviously not going to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sir. Plus, most of your molecules are going to be complicated. They're not just going to have one functional group. So, this one has has two different functional groups. It's got an ester, it's got an amide as well. Most of your molecules have multiple functional groups. This one is an is a carboxylic acid. This one is a ketone. So it's got multiple functional groups. So the general formula was not mm, okay. so the, the fifth and the last point is that uh, successive members, they differ by CH2. That's the fifth point. That's a fifth point here. Your successive members differ by CH2. So for example, if you have uh, like if you have CH4 methane, you've got ethane, C286, you've got uh, propane, which is C386. The next one is four carbon atoms. That's butane C4. Uh, so yes, C4 C3 H8. So that's C4 H10, and so on. So the successive members are going to differ by CH2. I mean, there's always going to be a difference of one carbon atom and two H2s. So yeah. So we'll just uh, as remember naming. We will spend a bit of time on naming. Okay, naming. I said naming. Remember on all of this, the question directly is. I mean, you you won't get any question directly on this. Like, you do formulas. This is like basic stuff. This is like basic stuff. Uh, 
they'll ask you, for example, even for formulas, they'll just ask you, okay, draw the displayed formula. So, uh, or name the molecule, right? So, so th those are going to be very basic questions, but if you don't even know those basic questions, you won't be able to solve the entire question based because of this. So remember, this is like ABCs. You're not going to get directly any big question on this. But if you don't know how to do this, you won't, you won't be able to solve the whole question. As a naming, what's the, what's the counting like in uh, the prefix of a molecule that's determined by the number of carbon atoms? See, yeah, that's that's your prefix. Prefix. I said, so it's uh, what's the counting like? It's meth, then it's eth. You've got prop, but uh, IGCC was up till but. Uh, we'll go till ten now. But uh, paint. As a pair, you've got uh, hex. Then you've got hept, then oct, non, and dec. Okay, that's, that's your counting. That's, so the name of the molecule will start based on the number of carbon atoms. It, it's got two carbon atoms, three carbon atoms, four carbon atoms, five carbon atoms. Seven carbon atoms, eight carbon atoms, nine carbon atoms, and ten carbon atoms. See, that's the octane. Oga, it's got eight carbon atoms. Heptane, that's uh, uh, seven carbon atoms. Okay. Butanone, that's but, that's four carbon atoms. Okay. Butanol, that's four carbon atoms. Okay. Ethanol, eth ethine, that's two carbon atoms. Okay. So the molecules will, I mean, the starting names will be. Will be these. So, okay, I'll do this. Okay. Okay. Chale. Okay. Everyone, take care, Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.